All right, so you guys know that I'm at my parents' house trying to help them remodel their kitchen. This is a piece that my mom wanted to turn into a coffee bar and have it kind of match with the kitchen and everything. So this was actually my stepdad's grandma's uh, china hutch. So it wasn't meant to come apart into two pieces. So I had to do a little finagling and get them separated. So I didn't have a top. We'll end up cutting a new top for it, which is very easy to do. Um, but we're going to start as we do by taking out the hardware um, and then kind of deciding on what route we're going to go with it. Um, at this point, my mom didn't know exactly how she wanted it to be finished. So I'm just doing all the prep work, getting it all sanded because it had such um, damage to the finish. I'm making sure that I sand it really, really well so that any pieces of top coat or anything are coming off with the sander and they're not going to interfere with my paint. And then I'm actually going to prime this entire piece, which isn't something I typically do because I don't find that I need to, but I knew this was going to bleed through and I knew that um, it just had quite a bit of damage to it. So I wanted to make sure that it was going to be a really, really strong paint job because it is going in their kitchen and she's going to be using it as a coffee bar. Then we're taking just an all-purpose cleaner and I'm making sure that I'm getting off any uh, grease, grime, dirt, all that kind of stuff and then using a tack cloth to make sure that everything's cleaned off of it. So this is just the Zenzer primer. I'm using this for gripping and for bleed through. I'm just rolling it on. I'm not being super, super careful with it because it's going to be a blended um, finish. She did decide that she wanted it to be blended so it'll add a bit of character to her kitchen. And at this point she did kind of decide that she wanted it to have kind of a uh, textured kind of antique type finish so it's going to have my new age blend but it's going to be a textured paint job so this primer actually helps with that I'm not going to be too worried about knocking anything back I want as much texture as possible so that actually helps me with my paint job and you'll just see me going back and forth between the roller and the brush I'm trying to get as much as I can with the roller just because it's easier and it covers more ground but the brush hits the tiny crevices so it is what it is. I had a sprayer out for all of this, but I'm just, I'm not willing to put primer through my sprayer. This one's even water-based and it just seemed too dangerous. And I mean, this stuff is still on my fingernails as we speak. So I'm glad I didn't. And then the top drawers, I was sanding that back. It had a, like just the most beautiful grain. So I decided to stain it in the Kona, which is the same stain that they're using throughout their entire kitchen and like beams and all that kind of stuff throughout their house. So I thought this was a good way to tie it in with the rest of their house as well. Um, this one is a gel stain. The one I typically use is just the regular Kona, but they had the gel stain on hand because that's what they were already using on all of their other stuff. So I just used it and I'm putting it on with one of the um, microfiber cloths. It works. You just put it on with whatever you have. <laughs> And then I went ahead and sprayed the original hardware. And here was the fun part. So those are the two colors, the gray and the cream right there. And I had to mix my chalk mountain paints to match. So I did that, it was fun. And then, so the very bottom of this piece, I started with uh, Iron Gate, which is an easy color to tell you what it is. And it blends up into the mixed color, which is several different colors. Um, so I'm not going to tell you about those because it would just, I don't have measurements. I was just blending until it matched. However, I did the same thing with the cream color. So the blend here that you see on the bottom is the same type of blend and transition. So I didn't film the top part of the blend because it's the exact same thing as this. And I don't want this to be a 20 minute video. I know you guys have lives and things to do. So it's the same exact blend, but here I went from Iron Gate into the soft gray that is their kitchen um, color. And then on the top of the piece, I went from the gray that's the kitchen color into the cream that's their kitchen color, if that makes sense. I really hope I'm explaining that well enough. But so, you know, first blends, the first coat always looks crazy and terrible, but it'll turn out great on the second coat. So just keep going. Keep doing, you know, you're, you're getting your base coat down where you're wanting your colors to go and end. 
And then on your second coat is where you can perfect your blend and get it to look how you want it to. So I just knew I was kind of choosing the design here on my base coat. And then as I go through to do the second coat is where I'll like, okay, this actually looks smooth and nice and, and neat. And you'll notice that with the brush, I'm going every which way because I do want to keep the texture in that. We just, we really wanted a lot of texture in it. Like if this was a house or if this was a piece from, you know, years and years and years ago and it'd have layers and layers of paint, that's kind of what we wanted it to look like. And so here's the second coat and this is where it's just all gonna come together. And you guys have seen my blends before. You can watch other videos. It's all typically the same, except for, like I said, this one's going, it doesn't have super smooth brush strokes because she wanted a textured finish. I'm using my Chalk Mountain brushes. They're a natural bristle brush. They also help with adding texture. And then of course the primer that we had on the bottom also helped with adding texture. So we've got a lot of textures going on here. And just make sure you keep your water on hand so you can keep spraying it and make sure you can keep moving the colors around to work them into each other. And these colors are of similar tone, so it's a lot easier to blend in colors like that than it is to do something way off scale from each other. I'm just keeping this close to the bottom because I want most of the bottom part to be the same color as her. Her lower cabinets are, are this light gray and then her upper cabinets are the cream color. So I'm trying to keep that in mind while I'm blending. Okay, so this is the original, it's not the top, but it was the centerpiece. But I do want to keep the same shape, so I just traced out on this piece of plywood the shape that the original, I'm gonna call it a top, but it wasn't. And then I just cut it out with a jigsaw. And then I take the router bit and I route it around the edge. I didn't show that because I didn't bring my tripod to put my camera on, so, and there's nobody right there to film for me. Uh, right here my mom is conveniently filming for me and i'm just giving this a light sand just around the edges to give it the distressed look and then we're going to seal the whole thing in poly she's doing a semi-gloss because it is going in her kitchen and it is going to have um coffee and liquids and all that kind of thing on it so we're using a tougher top coat semi-gloss and i'm doing a smooth finish on the wood you can see me going with the grain of the wood but then when i go over the rest of the piece it's just every which way because I'm just adding another layer of texture. Oh yeah, and you can see the top on there. It's not attached, but I just attached it with screws from inside the drawer. And then I just go through over the glass and you guys have seen this before too. You just scrape it away with a razor blade. Super easy to me, it's way better than tape. And then I didn't like how flat the hardware looked and their color is copper in their kitchen, so um, I went in to find some gilding wax at the store because I didn't bring mine. I couldn't find any, but I did find this awesome pin. So you have to be a little more meticulous with it. Like gilding wax, I feel like you can just run your finger over and it just hits the high points. This pin is not that way. You have to be pretty careful with it, but it does a beautiful job. And I want to say the ink inside is more like spray paint. So it'll last and hold up just as well as the, the paint does. And then this is the backer board to the hutch top. I just painted it the same cream color and then we're going to decoupage some tissue paper on that my mom really liked. So now we'll just attach the back. I'm using the same nails that came with it. When I pulled them out, I'm just putting the same ones back in. Okay, so they're putting the hutch top up on the wall 
So in order to do that, I figured we should have this little lip here. We made sure that it was um, mounted into the studs and then it gave it just a little bit of something to rest on. And then my stepdad is going to get up and there is a wooden bar at the top of this for structure. And he is actually going to mount that with screws. We drilled some pilot holes first, but then um, he actually screwed the top of the hutch directly into the studs in the wall. So that thing is not coming down. But it was just kind of a cool way to add, you know, this old piece into their home. They, it's the same color as their upper and lower cabinets, but with, you know, a little bit of flair. And it's, you know, his grandma. So I just think it's super cool. So not like my original pieces. Again, I can't give you a dollar amount of what I could sell this for because I did it for my parents. But I hope you guys like this video. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe, like, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys next week.